In this exercise, we're going to discuss the Revolve feature. The Revolve feature can be one of our base features, or it can be a secondary feature added at a later time. If we look at, say, this sketch here, I'll rotate it around here so we can see it. And we go up to the Revolve feature. It's very easy to use. Once I select the Revolve feature, you'll notice that I automatically get geometry. Now I've done nothing ahead of time to create this geometry. Inventor sees automatically a closed profile, and then it sees a center line. By doing that in my sketch, it immediately understands that's what I want to revolve and starts revolving it. If I stop here for a second and I go back and I look at my sketch, you can see I have the closed feature and then I have a center line. Create the center line by drawing a line, selecting it, and then coming over to the line type. We'll discuss this a little bit more in detail in another exercise. You finish your sketch. Once again, I'll go up to the top and click Revolve, and you can see I get a Revolve feature. As with Extrude and other features in Inventor, we can roll up this large dialog box and use either our little micro palette here, or we can expand it out and we can look at it and we can use this full dialog. I like to get that out of the way. I do like my real estate. The first option is, do we want to do a full revolve or do we want to do an angular revolve or do we have two objects? I've used this for some snap fits on a plastic part. The plastic part was kind of donut shaped and then wanted the snap fit to be the shape of the object so that it'll snap in better. So I would use that between two faces to get that exact distance of the snap fit because as the donut increased in size, the snap fits would need to adjust an angle. So if I just typed in six degrees, for example, and the donut got bigger, six degrees would make the snap fit larger when really I just wanted it to be you know, a half inch or whatever. So then I could use the between two faces. For this exercise, I'm just going to do the full so we can see what it looks like. I could, if I decided not to do the full and I wanted to do either the angle or to the next, I could come in here and actually measure something. I have two selections. And these are basically my arrows here. And they're already fulfilled, but if I wanted to change them, I could select on them again and fulfill that change. Next, I have the decision, do I want it to be solid or surface? And then I have my join, cut, intersect, new solid. And if I'm doing an angle, I get the directional. You know, do I want it to be symmetric, asymmetric, direction one, direction two? And then I can hit OK. And then to do a secondary feature, I'll say create a new sketch. And I'll use one of the existing planes here. And then I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit F7 on my keyboard. Or, once again, with Inventor we have multiple options. We can come in here and right click and come down to Slice Graphics. What this does is it shows me a profile of my object. Now I'm going to come up here and I'm going to select the down arrow beside Project Geometry. I'm going to say Project Cut Edges. What that does is it basically gives me the edges where that plane cut through that object. And then I'm going to come in here and I'll just draw a little rectangle or something here. Dimension it real quick. Once again, I'm referencing one object to the other with my dimensions. And then Remember our trick with our center line. I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to draw a line. I'm going to select it. I'm going to make it a center line. Say finish. Say revolve again. And you'll notice this time it didn't automatically select my profile or my axis. Because I have more than one axis that it could be. I'm going to switch it from being join or create mass to being cut. And I'm going to subtract out mass. Hit OK. See there, now I've created this groove in that part. Pretty simple with Revolve. Let's take a look at a couple of our options. 
We do have the alternate solution option. If you remember from extrude, this basically says, do you want to go to the front of a face or the back of a face if you're only going partially to a face? We have the intersect where it will give you any objects that run into each other. I use this a lot for spacers and things like that where you may have two objects. And then we have match shape, our preview, which is our little glasses down here, and our output. The inputs on Revolve, I think, are even simpler than Extrude. The biggest thing to remember is you always have to have a closed profile, and you have to have a center line or an object for it to revolve around. Now, with that said, if I come onto this other side, and I create a 2D sketch, I hit F7. And this time, I'm just going to sketch something out. I'm going to dimension it. And you'll notice I don't have my sketch projected in there. It's not required that you do. I could just come in here and project, say, the sketch up here, the edges of it. And then I could use that to make it collinear. I could say, give me the projected edge of this here. Make that collinear. So I get the same results with just the regular projection as I do the projected cut edge. Now, on something like this, I would probably always do the cut edge just because it's easier, it's quicker, saves you time. But if there was a situation where you didn't want everything, you could just do that partial. This time you'll notice I didn't do a center line. So if I come up here to the revolve, and it takes me a second there. If I'm trying to select something and it won't select the right thing, usually what I'll do is I'll put my mouse on it and I'll take my hand off my mouse. And then it'll give me this select other. And what this allows us to do is come in here and pick which one we want it to be. You'll notice there I got the wrong one. Sometimes if you just kind of move your mouse around, there we go. I did actually get the right one in with the other. It's like a little blue shade inside of there. And this time, for my axis, instead of picking a line I've drawn, pick on that button there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to pick the origin axis. Because my original sketch was off that origin point. Do a cut. And I get the same result. Now, if my original sketch didn't use that origin point, my origin axis wouldn't be lined up. But we talked about this in sketching, that you want to try to use that origin point whenever possible. And this is one of the reasons why. So if I use that origin point, I don't have to draw a separate line. I can just use that origin line as part of my sketch and revolve around that. With Revolve, like I said, it's a very simple tool to use. Don't overcomplicate it, overthink it. Try to be very creative with it. There's a lot you can do. Here I've created a groove. We can come in here and we can create an edge for like a gasket or something like that. There's a lot we can do with the Revolve feature. And we'll get into a little bit more in some of the other exercises. We'll come back and we'll actually use the Revolve feature again. Play with this, have some fun, and see what you can do with it.